Okay folks, um, this is a tutorial that I do in class often with some of my students and by popular demand they've asked me to sort of screencast it so that here goes. Um, we're in Photoshop and we're going to be using the vanishing point tool uh, to in order to sort of visualize for somebody who maybe doesn't have good three-dimensional perception or what have you, show them what it would look like to potentially print um, and apply a graphic to the side of an object. In this case, it happens to be uh, the Hepworth in Wakefield, the Hepworth Center, so basically a building um, in this case. There's another tutorial which accompanies this, which is more to do with putting your screens onto things like mobile phones, iPads, desktops, etc. Uh, but this one specifically deals with the issues of sort of wrapping around corners, etc. So I'm going to take you through uh, this tutorial. At the moment, I'll just show you how um, the image is constructed. So I have the original image. It's it's not my own. It is one that was open source on the web. Um, I have found an image that I wish to apply to it. Um, this image is from a it's a desktop wallpaper that I really love, uh, created by this Timothy Maitland, um, and it's part of an Australian thing. But I just think it's got a lot of nice white space in it and what have you. So you can download it for free as wallpaper etc so I've just pinched the file from there for the point of view demonstrating and so what we're going to be doing is applying this wrapping it to the building um, this is the initial wrap that we're going to do what I'll do is step you through the layers and then I'll show you the process after that so this is the initial application where it has actually kind of created vanishing points as you can see these things roll off into perspective and so it's distorting more accurately. A lot of people try and put these things on, use control, free transform, and pull the corners, but it doesn't give you quite the same sort of accurate, if you like, photographic, photorealistic uh, perspective. So this is once it's applied, but as you can see, it's extremely flat because it hasn't made any tonal adjustments. And then I have a range of different adjustment layers which use masks, which slightly darken around the corners um, and just slightly take the edge, put a bit of shadow in here because this would be darker reflecting that. And finally put a bit of highlight maybe even in the top. Again, these are adjustment layers so they can all be turned off, etc. Okay. Not to mention obviously the fact I could go in and easily at some point adjust the levels of the original in the first place anyway. Uh, so I still have and maintain full control of this. I'll take you through that process um, starting with copying the image to the clipboard and creating the vanishing point guidelines. So the first thing to do is find an image that you like. So in this case, I have that image already on my clipboard and um, you can just select and copy. So for example, I'm copying this, but obviously normally this would be another file. Um, Next thing we need to do is we need to create vanishing point areas within the image. Now, because this is a Photoshop file, which I've already applied this to, I've already got them created, but I'm going to delete them and show you how I made them. But first, let's take a look. So I'm going to create a new layer by clicking the new layer, a little page icon at the bottom of the layers palette. You can also do it from the layer flyout here. Bear in mind, I am using CS6. Uh, we tend to use Creative Cloud now in the studio, but Really, this is probably the same functionality going back almost to CS2 or 3. I uh, can't quite remember, but it's been around for ages. So it doesn't matter if you don't have the latest version. This should operate exactly the same. Next, we're going to go up to the filter menu and down to vanishing point. So vanishing point is actually a filter. The reason we created a new layer first is if we don't, it will automatically glue it onto our image. And if we want to make any changes or trim edges, then we're, we're in trouble. So I always work on a new layer, go up to filter and up to vanishing point. Let's resize this so you can see it. So I'll just zoom out with control minus. So this basically shows you the image. And as you can see, I've got a grid. Now I've actually got three planes on it. One down one side, one down the main front of the building and one along this edge as well. Now I'm going to show you how I made those by just deleting. And with the grid tool selected up in the corner here, why I've, one of the reasons I've chosen this image is it has a clear kind of grid in the way that the poured concrete works. However, at the bottom here, there's an obstruction. Again, good reason um, to use this image for this particular demo. So I'm going to click in the top corner there, 
I'm going to come along and I'm going to click roughly where I think that one should be. And if I went here, I'd struggle to see this line. So I'm actually going to work to the line above. And the really powerful thing about this tool is once I've pinned those four corners, so I'm just clicking in each corner with this tool selected, it'll create me a grid. Now I should be able to also pull out that grid and extend it. And as you can see, it's going to match it now. You can also see that this building's not built by most on a totally flat site and therefore there's a bit of a gradient on the ground level but it does allow me to go in like that i will normally zoom in at this point i hold down spacebar or you can go over here to the hand tool and i just want to make sure that i've got these points in exactly the right location if these aren't right we'll end up frustrated later on so it's just worth zooming in a bit you can even nudge them uh, with the arrow keys, I believe, maybe not. I'm sure you could before. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure I tuck all these right into the right spaces. Spacebar again allows me to drag. It's common in Photoshop. And I'm pretty much good to go. Just zoom out. Okay. So the next stage is to put the plane along here. Now you'd think you could just click, but actually it's cleverer than that. If I hold down the Alt key, uh, and drag out from that edge you'll see that it'll automatically work out that there's a corner and it'll create the plane now occasionally i have to go in and still tweak it there's a few pixels extending here so i might need to just slightly override it you can see it's slightly higher than the line okay so i'm just going to correct that and then i'm going to come back and check sometimes when you correct one thing it fractionally moves everything so i'm just going to come back over here check everything else is still in play and hold down the alt key again just zoom out so you can see the whole thing so i've got a grid here grid here hold down alt key on this end it's not going to play at all wrong tool selected so that would help and drag out again okay so you should be able to create this kind of grid again easy to go in i actually think in this particular building that these two walls uh that this wall's not perpendicular to this one so judging by the fact that this angle is different to this angle as well it's obviously a nice piece of modern architecture but from our point of view a little bit irregularly shaped now it's not looking like it's going to play ball and let me go in and edit that so i might just have to live with it for the moment okay uh normally i think it allows me to select it and move it okay just watch out for any of your corners because occasionally as i say it assumes that everything is uh, perpendicular and square you could always do it in steps uh, for the purposes of this demo that's fine and I can always refine that edge if I need it to later or even extend it up sometimes. You can see I could put a top in there as well. I'm going to undo that. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. Now that will save that grid into the Photoshop document now. Okay, so I'm going to call that layer vanishing point. Okay, next thing I want to do is normally I would obviously paste straight onto that layer but I'm going to keep one as a reference just for the moment. So next thing I want to do is create a new layer again, go back to filter and back to vanishing point. Remember that I have the image I want to paste already on my clipboard. So I'm going to hit control or command depending on your Mac or PC and V which is paste in virtually every application. You'll see a thumbnail of your image come up here. Now if this happens to be massive I would recommend cancelling opening the image in another file and rescaling it. If it's too tiny, you probably need a higher res version. This is about right, um, but if it's too big, sometimes it's a good idea to just switch to the transform tool and scale it a little bit smaller initially. This is not gonna render. And then when I drag it onto the building, you will see that it will wrap. Okay, it automatically goes into perspective um, and I can make my decisions about where I position it. Now. It's hard to reach these corners later on. So holding shift will keep your image proportion. It stops it stretching. And I can decide 
how much I want it to wrap around. Okay, so I can pull it to and from, put it into position, and decide where I want it. So I'm going to put it about there. Okay, when I'm happy with the position, it's not wrapping all the way around. You could pull it, but it will stretch and distort the image. You can also hit undo if you make a change and then change your mind. It's control or command Z. And when I'm happy, I'm just going to hit OK. So that is the first part. It has effectively wrapped it. But as you can see, there's no visible depth to it. It's also covering elements like windows, etc., uh, which need to be sort of visible, as it were. So just temporarily, I'm going to hide. Hide that layer. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this a bit more easily. Now, because I've got a nice square object here, okay, it's quite easy to use the polygonal lasso tool. That's hidden underneath the normal lasso tool. Okay, so it's L for lasso, but we want the polygonal one, which means I can click and just draw out any shape polygon. So I'm just going to click in these corners where the window is. Like so. Okay, and I hold down the spacebar, drag across, do the next one. Now I'm holding shift. If I don't, it will deselect the original. It's the same as coming up to here and hitting add to selection, but it saves me having to go up to the corner. So shift, and you can see the little plus symbol. And I can come along. And just click each time in the corners. When you go back to the end, it completes the loop. If you find you've missed a little bit or you're not completely sure about the selection, just hold shift again and go in and update it. Now I'm going to overlap here um, because I want to also cut out this wall. Scroll left. Keep. I don't need to keep shift going once I've made my first click on my extra submit selection. So I'm just going to come over here. Okay, let's zoom out. I'm accidentally deselected, so I'll just control Z clicked a few too many times and final one over on this side for now again shift click first time so that you don't lose your existing selection or replace your existing selection I guess there's one more which is shift click down in this corner And this is pretty much usually about the slowest bit. Zoom out so we can see the whole image. So you can see I've got the windows and doors all selected. I want to bring back my layer and I'm going to turn this into a mask. Now normally a lot of people would just hit delete here and get rid. But if I decide I want to make any adjustments or anything like that, I tend to work in masks. They're reversible. For example, I'm going to show you in a minute how we could simulate the effect. You can get a film that you can put over windows with small holes in. They often use it on buses and it allows you to sort of see through partially. Okay, And I'm going to do that in this window in a bit. So for the moment, what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom and just hit mask tool, which is at the bottom of the layers palette, add layer mask. And that's going to mask into the shapes I've got, which is the exact opposite of what I want, but it's much easier to do that initially. Make sure you've got the mask selected, not the layer up to image down to adjustments and along to invert and that will invert your mask in other words the things that were selected are going to become holes and the other areas are going to be the full image okay so in mask terms whatever is black will not be touched whatever is white will be visible so you can see this whole area is unmasked and the windows are effectively cut out of our image okay now, because I've got that mask, if I decide to change that positioning of this graphic on the wall, I can reuse the same mask because it's not going to move. These windows are not likely to move in the image, so I can always reuse it. Now, I'm just going to stop there, and I'll come back in another tutorial, show you how we add the tonality to this walls to make it look a little bit more believable. Okay, so I'll see you in the next one, and hope you enjoyed uh, learning about Vanishing Point.